Have you ever found yourself tangled in a web of coroutines, wondering if you're doing it the right way? If so, you're not alone. Today, we're diving into the question of whether it's more Pythonic and performant to use coroutines for tail calls in Python. I totally get it. Many developers face this dilemma when working with nested coroutines. It can be confusing and frustrating, especially when you're trying to optimize your code. You're definitely not the only one grappling with this issue. Here's the specific question we're tackling today. One user asked, is it more Pythonic and or performant to use coroutines for tail calls in Python? They provided examples of nested coroutines and are curious about the best approach. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what's the deal with coroutines? In Python, coroutines allow you to write asynchronous code that can pause and resume, making it easier to handle tasks like IO operations. But when it comes to tail calls, the question arises, do we really need all those nested coroutines? And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a performance measurement that might surprise you. You won't want to miss it. To determine whether using coroutines or regular functions is more Pythonic, the user should consider readability and maintainability. Using coroutines can make the code more explicit about its asynchronous nature. Next, let's evaluate performance. The user should note that while the coroutine version may have a slight performance penalty, the difference is not drastic. The second version, using regular functions, performed faster in tests. Additionally, the user should think about future maintenance. If other developers are familiar with coroutines, they may find the coroutine version easier to understand. However, if they prefer simpler functions, the regular function approach might be better. In conclusion, the user should weigh the benefits of clarity and performance. If the code base is heavily asynchronous, sticking with coroutines may be beneficial. Otherwise, regular functions could suffice. As a performance test, I removed the await statement from the deep function and timed 1 million iterations of await A with both setups. The first version took around 2.4 seconds, while the second version took about 1.6 seconds. This suggests that there may be a performance penalty for making everything coroutines. Fun fact, the term coroutine was first coined in the 1950s. It's amazing how concepts from decades ago are still relevant in modern programming. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. The user suggests sticking with the first approach, where all functions are defined as coroutines. This method clearly shows where the code can be suspended with a weight, providing better tracebacks that illustrate the execution flow. They highlight that if an error occurs in the deep coroutine, the first snippet gives a detailed traceback, showing the entire call stack. In contrast, the second snippet only shows the error at the point of failure, making debugging harder. Additionally, the user points out that the first approach is easier to maintain. If you need to add an async call later, you can do so directly in the core team without rewriting multiple parts of the code. That's it for that answer. Let's take a look at another one. According to this user, the question of whether using coroutines for tail calls is Pythonic is not subjective. They argue that tail call optimization is officially considered unpythonic. The reasoning is based on a stance from the language's leadership, emphasizing that such optimization should not be part of Python. So, which approach is more Pythonic? While both methods are valid, using regular functions that return coroutines can lead to cleaner and more maintainable code. Plus, it might just give you a performance boost. And there you have it. Understanding when to use coroutines can make a big difference in your Python code. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more insights and tips on Python programming.